note length does exactly what you would expect it to do. And that is when you play in a note, it's going to force it to whatever the timing is here. Whether you play something very short and we can watch the little yellow boxes here, you see how it holds it out longer. Or if I hold down a note indefinitely, it's going to cut it off there and create a quarter note. And we can watch and see the in and out. Remember that with the in, it's responding here at the very start of the signal flow. And out is showing you actually what is being uh, generated and what the sampler is going to respond to, or it could be any virtual instrument, obviously. So there's an example if I'm holding it down. And if we go shorter, See, it's forcing a longer note in there. If I overlap on the same note, it's going to just create something legato until the final press. And then it's going to hold that note out. And we could stop it and go in and look at that just so you see exactly what it is I'm talking about there. But if you're playing up and down, It will hold it out, and the same thing is true with the chords. So, like so. So, all pretty straightforward when you're using it, just straight on the track. And there are some uses for it. Obviously, if you were to combine this with the multi note, diatonic transpose, or what have you, you could just use sort of like one finger chords and, and you know, do like sixteenths or eighths, whatever uh, the case may be. Where this gets interesting, though, is when you use this really just as a trigger source for um, the note side chain and doing modulation stuff. And I'll show you some of that as we go on. The other thing I can show you is the release. And this is not that interesting on just a single instrument. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense on a single instrument. And right now, it's actually not going to work because when I release a key, the, vo uh, the velocity is going to be zero. So if I go in here and I'm playing something, it's generating a note, but that note is going to have a velocity of zero. And since this is velocity sensitive, it's not going to output anything. But if I go in here and choose fixed, what happens is when I hold down a key and then release, it plays that note of this duration. And if you were to just kind of pick at your keys, you could get that sort of a result. And maybe it is even worth showing you that. I've never actually looked at what this would look like if I was to do it. Let's see. almost like plucking a harp or something so that's just kind of cool but rarely are you going to be uh, playing in that way unless maybe you've learned in some really uh, strange way on how to play the keyboard uh, but maybe for some like uh, MIDI controllers working in release mode might actually make sense what I imagine the purpose of this is would be if you had two instruments playing at the same time you had them both enabled and so one of them has this release and so when you finish on one it will play the other one and it's actually much easier to show you this, so I'll just pause the video and set that up quickly. So here would be an interesting application of note length using the release trigger. So here we have this dark pad that's just going to play back normally. And then on the ghost pad, if I have these both activated at the same time, this one is going to be reacting to the same key press, but it's not going to start playing until after I release. I don't need fixed velocity on because there is no velocity sensitivity on the instrument. And then I just went in here and set the length manually. And I also added a pitch shifter so we can get a little more contrast. And so this is kind of an interesting idea right here. And then especially if I was to go in here and just be like pressing for shorter durations, and it would have actually been cool to have that going, but I think the sound is all you need to hear um, in this case. You can create these really interesting textures and blends and, and sort of harmonic relationships that maybe you wouldn't attempt any other way. So there's one application of the note length using the release trigger.
Another kind of obvious application of note length is to set up kind of like a dummy clip and in real time use that to trigger that note side chain and get some kind of variation. So this is just a very basic example to show you how you would set it up. But I'd go in here and I would grab our note side chain and I'm going to set the um, input of this to be from the note length uh, track. All right, so it's going to be responding to what's going on in here. All right, and then what I would do is I would set this to cover something like the cutoff, and this is just very, very basic. But each time I'd press a key, no matter how long I hold this key down for, and if we're watching, it's going to be hard to kind of watch this, but uh, just note that I'm holding the key for a long time, we'll be able to get that quarter note no matter when we press it in. And so in real time, this would be pretty cool. Or you can go bop, 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 and then get the quarter note, or you could change the length, whatever the case may be. So uh, we can just listen to this here. We could also have it controlling the resonance. So a lot of potential for this, and this is just one very basic example, and there's so much more you'd be able to do with this, but I just figured for the sake of example, you could see the way I could set that up. And if this was happening in real time in a live performance, you had drums and stuff in the background, and you need that envelope to kind of move based on a specific uh, subdivision of the beat, a note duration, you could do that here. Or again, you could go in and work with the manual time. So that's going to do it for note length. I can't wait to uh, hear and see all the stuff you guys do with that one. A lot of potential here.